COVID-19 has been revealed as the cause of the mysterious deaths in Kanu State. And is the federal government deceiving Nigerians and the international community on her promise to rescue Leah Shaibu from captivity? Her parents think so. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thank you for joining us. Now, the leader of the Presidential Task Force Committee on COVID-19, Dr. Nasiru Sani Guazo, has confirmed suspicion that COVID-19 was responsible for the spate of deaths recorded in Kanu in the last three weeks. Dr. Guazo said the committee's report was based on investigation conducted under development. This is just as the Nigerian Union of Allied Health Professionals urged President Muhammad Buhari to reverse his decision on the easing of the COVID-19 lockdown, which took effect today. Joining us to discuss this is Mohamed Bello, Chief Executive Officer of African Center for Innovative Research and Development. He is in Kanu. Thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. We're also joined via Skype as well by Professor Issa Sadiq, Aminu Kanu Teaching Hospital. Thank you very much for joining us, also in Kanu. Yeah, good evening and thank you. Thank you very much. Let me start with you, Dr. Issa. Did the confirmation that deaths were COVID-19 related came, um, come as a surprise to you? Well, I'm not sure uh, Dr. Nasser Sanu Gorzo is still talking about that. because This is because after a release of that statement, I've seen another one on BBC in which Dr. Nasser Salugorzo denied that report. Uh, but having said that, I'm of the opinion that the number of deaths recorded in Kano is multifactorial. There is no doubt that uh, COVID-19 can be implicated in some of the deaths. The only reason why we cannot uh, confirm the deaths uh, due to COVID-19 is because during most part of the last three weeks, the laboratory that was working to confirm presence or absence of COVID-19 was not working. So as a result of that, we have missed out an opportunity to confirm some of the deaths. But I believe that some of them that escaped our record uh, as a result of COVID-19. But again, apart from that, there are chronic ailments which requires the attention of the medical services, but the situation we find ourselves in which the health services has shifted most of its attention to COVID-19, the people who are suffering from those other illnesses were placed in a, a disadvantaged situation and some of them died as a result of those other conditions. So as before, I said, okay. again, it is multifactorial. All right, Be before I move on, I'll, I'd like to take you on your earlier response that um, Dr. Guazo has uh, denied ever making those statements. Um, is it possible that multiple newspapers will account, give the same account that is different from what he is saying. Because some had the caption of 80% of the mysterious deaths confirmed as COVID-19. And all of the papers have this same report. So how come um, he is saying, he's saying he did not give, issue that statement? Yeah, I'm not Dr. Gorzo, but one thing I read in the new report, which was released by BBC, is that he made mention of 80% not in relation to the death, but he said 80% of cases of COVID-19 are not severe. It is among the remaining 20% that you have some as severe cases, and then out of them, some proportion will die. So that is where he made mention of 80%. But he said he was misquoted as when people were talking about 80% of the deaths were due to COVID-19. 
That is what I read about Dr. Gorzo's new statements on BBC. All right, Mohammed, what's your reaction to this now? Because one report says, I mean, a lot of the deaths are COVID-19 related. And now we're hearing, no, I did not say that. What's your reaction? Yes, thank you very much. Um, um, I want to align with um, Dr. You see, quite a number of factors can be responsible for the high increasing mortality rate we are experiencing currently in Kano State. And to start with, you cannot also rule out the influence of climatic condition. You see, first, it is a serious heat period now. And if you look at where, I mean, if you look at the center of occurrence of these deaths, you would realize it is within the Kano metropolis. And for somebody who understands the, geogra the geographical setting of Kano very well, you would, you, would, you would agree to the fact that, I mean, the housing structure, of course, in itself, can be responsible for some of the uh, uh, harsh weather conditions that will perhaps um, generate or bring about certain elements that perhaps could also be responsible for the death. That is one. Two, if you look at prior to COVID-19 case in Kano, medical doctors were very much available at the hospitals. So certain elements that perhaps also have symptoms of COVID-19 were well attended to. Somebody with high fever would rush to the hospital, and of course, a doctor is always there to attend to that person. But now, with the coming of COVID-19 and the inadequacy or lack of personal protective equipment for these frontline health workers, some of them are afraid of attending to these people. And as a result, they are left to die. So when you look at all of these things, you would understand that, yes, COVID-19 can perhaps have contributed to why you are having increased in mortality rate, but not as a viral infection, not as an infection, but as a condition that has created fear and anxiety and risk among medical health practitioners that are not able to attend to people with certain ailments that have symptoms that are likely, I mean, symptoms of COVID-19. Because if you look at COVID-19, what we are meant to understand is once you have COVID-19, you are likely to run high fever. Once you have COVID-19, your breathing, once it gets chronic, the breathing gets somehow. And somebody with cardiac arrest, when you take that person to the hospital, of course, the breathing is already, is, already, is already down. The next thing is when the doctor sees that kind of person, he'll be afraid to come close to that kind of person because he's not sure if that person is suffering from COVID-19 or not. Courtesy of what? Courtesy of lack of personal protective equipment. I'm not sure if the doctor has seated there, has full kits for protecting himself when a patient comes to him now. Yeah, I'm let, not let, sure let's if ask doctor if he right does. Let's, let's, let's interject and ask doctor, do you have all you need as uh, personal protective equipment? Do you have that? Before I ask you a question. You know, that's a challenge all over the world, but it is worse in our own part of the globe. We do not have adequate personal protective equipment, and that is why some of our hospitals are not functioning now. Okay, um, so the, the question I wanted to ask you uh, before that, um, uh, that came up was, please help us understand, in this day and age, we will have for three weeks, over three weeks, a government and medical personnel, or should I say representatives of government, saying that describing deaths, not one, not two, not three, as mysterious with all the scientific um, um, research and everything that we have. How is it possible that for three weeks at a stretch, we are still to get information as to the reason why these people are dying, aside from the few cases that has been confirmed? Honestly, that's an unfortunate situation that, as you said, in this age, with all our technology, we do not understand fully the causes of death. One would have expect that as people die in large numbers like that, we are able to account for the number of deaths. 
number one in terms of quantity, that's the number of people dying, and then getting to the bottom of the situation. Now, since we are in an era where there is a lot of COVID-19 all over uh, the nation, we should be able to swap, that's to take a swap from the patients dead or alive, and then even if after their death, we should be able to relate the death with certain illnesses, especially COVID-19, if it is present or not. But as I said earlier, we had a challenge in the sense that as a, for most part of, of those weeks, we had our lab not functioning. So when the, uh, the number of deaths escalated, people would expect that within the next 48 hours, for example, we should have a result and then we will be able to know if it is COVID-19 or not for most of the deaths. However, our samples were taken to Abuja, and this usually takes a long time. Some of them last for over 10 days before we can get results that will tell us whether or not it is COVID-19. And the other aspect we should have been looking at in the situation is to do other investigations that will prove to us whether, for example, diabetic patients we are having complications of diabetes, whether those with kidney diseases were having complications from their ailments and so on and so forth. So, but the, because the health services themselves were suffering from neglect, this is because people were afraid, as my friend has said, people were afraid to even handle some of those cases. So the issue of investigating further to get to the root of the matter, as far as those other illnesses were concerned, we are not optimal. And that is why we, are, we missed the opportunity of even diagnosing those other conditions. So on both sides, we lost out on opportunities for most part of the weeks. However, now that we are having our laboratories functioning in Kano, as far as COVID-19 is concerned, I can tell you that from Friday to date, that's uh, about three days now, all the cases of deaths that occurred in hospitals, especially in Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital, we make sure that we take swab from those patients. So going forward, I can assure you that in no distant future, we will be able to come out with a clearer picture as to those deaths, whether they are COVID-19 related or not. At least this, I can assure you of that. Okay, uh, let me come back to you, uh, Mohammed. Uh, there is a, a relaxation of um, the lockdown in Kano in spite of the tougher one that was announced by the president. We understand that Mondays and Thursdays will be locked down free uh, from about 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. This was announced by the Kano state governor. With this indication that there is already a high level of community transmission, was that decision tricky in the first instance? Well, if I, if I understand the point at which you are trying to drive at, uh, you want to know whether the relaxation of um, the lockdown has grave implication yes. on the citizens, right? Yes, yes, indeed. All right. For me, I would, I would refer to the relaxation of uh, the lockdown as a huge mistake on the part of the government. Because at the, at, the, at the level where you have COVID-19 being at community transmission level, you, what you need to do is to take proactive and radical measures that ensures you cut down the transmission. But when you relax, when you relax the lockdown, which is one of the proactive measures of cutting down uh, community transmission, it means you have exposed the larger part of the society to further contracting the virus. Because people will definitely rush to where they are going to get either uh, groceries or other necessities they need. For me, what we did at the center was to assess the situation and issue out a press statement immediately, asking the Kano state government to please learn from other states like Lagos and Kaduna State, and create 
pockets of markets within communities. Within these communities, you have, for example, primary schools that are fenced, that has at least two to three gates. Work with leaders of, leaders of market uh, uh, associations to please mobilize two, three of their persons to these locations where every commodity or food items or groceries people are looking for can be found there. And before these people get into all of those places, make sure you provide hand washing, uh, uh, and pipeline drums in the front of that building, provide marks for people to use or make it compulsory for people to use. Before you get into that market, wear a mask, wash your hand and get into that market. When you, Mohamed, we have Mohamed, to follow local don't government. Don't forget what and you Moroba, want to say. Oh, um, don't, don't, don't forget your thoughts. We need to go on a quick break. And when we come back, we'll let you finish up. Do stay with us.